Hi, in this video I'm just going to go through some of the fractional power work you're going to need for additional maths. Okay, there's a couple of different questions they can give on, on this one. Uh, so I'll start with a bit of revision of just your basic sort of um, rules of powers, indices, and we'll put some fractions in there then just to see how they just work the same really, even with fractions as they do with uh, integers. Okay, so here's a, a couple of multiplying questions to start then. Um, at any time in this video, you can pause and try a question before I go through it. Obviously, it might be helpful later on when we get to some of the ones off uh, exam question. So on this first one then, we've got 3y squared times 5y to the power of 5. So the 3 times 5, they multiply each other, so that's 15. And you would add your powers, which you're allowed to do because your base letters are the same. So that'll be y to the power of 7. That's nice and easy. And the next one as well, 6 times 2 is 12. We've got t cubed and t to the power of 4. Add your powers. That's t to the power of 7 as well. Next one, we've got 8 times 3, which is 24. The only difference this time is we've got m to the power of minus 2 and m to the power of 4. If you add them together, minus 2 add 4 gives you positive 2, so 24m squared. And then basically the exact same thing, but with fractional powers. 7 times 2 is 14. And we've got p, we've got 1 fifth, add 3 fifths. They're both in terms of fifths, so that's nice and easy. One three fifth add three fifths is four fifths, okay? So nothing different there. You do exactly the same with fractional powers as you do with uh, integer powers. So if you look at the next set now then, uh, and you let me move that down, there we go. Let's get rid of that. What's going on here? Okay, so all of these ones are using um, powers put with brackets um, and there is a rule for this but if I kind of show you on this first one how it works 5h all squared means 5h times 5h so that's 5 times 5 which is 25 and h times h which is h squared so basically what's happening there is the 5 is getting squared and then the h is also getting squared. So both things, both parts get squared uh, separately. Okay, so 25h squared. If you look at the next one, we've got 3f squared cubed. So that's 3f squared times 3f squared times 3f squared. So we've got 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 cubed, which is 27. Okay, so that's the 3 being cubed. And then we've got f squared being cubed. So that's f squared times f squared times f squared. If you add your powers together, you get f to the power of 6, which you'll notice is 2 times 3. So when you've got a power being raised to a power, so f squared being cubed, that's actually the only time where you multiply powers together. Right? If we look at the next one, if I do this one the quick way, so I've got 2 to the power of 5, so that's 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. And then I've got y cubed to the power of 5, and I can say that that's you know, y cubed times y cubed times y cubed times y cubed times y cubed, but I can just use the rule where I multiply the powers and I get y to the power of 15. Okay. And then this last one, we've got a fractional power, it's a half. So the first thing we need to do is 9 to the power of a half. If you go back to GCSE maths, you remember that the power of a half actually means the square root. So 9 to the power of a half is actually just 3. And then I've got m to the power of 6 to the power of a half. Well, I can just use my times in rule again, because there it's a power to a power. Uh, and 6 times a half is 3, so that gives me 3m cubed. And on the last one of this set, we've got 27 to the power of a third. Again, going back to GCSE, the power of a third is cube root. The cube root of 27 is 3. And then I've got 9 and a third, uh, sort of power to a power, so I can times them, a third of 9 is 3, so that's 
e to the power 3 there as well, one third of 9. Okay? So that's when you've got powers being raised to another power. And then the last little bit I want to go over then, uh, a couple of division ones. So opposite of multiplying now then, so you'll divide your sort of your coefficients, your big front numbers. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then you take away your powers, top take away bottom, 5 take away 2 is 3, so 4h cubed. On the next one, we've got 20 divided by 4, which is 5. Be careful here, you've got 3 take away minus 2. That becomes an add. Sorry, that should be a k in there. So uh, 3 take away minus 2 becomes an add. That's k to the power of 5. I wouldn't be able to do it if I had k's and h's mixed up. I've just forgotten to change the h to a k there. And on the last one, same rule. 6 divided by 2 we work out, so that's 3t. And then we've got here 5 eighths take away 2 eighths. They've got the same denominator, so that's just going to be 3 eighths. The rules don't change. They can just be a little bit trickier to apply. Okay. Now, if you have a look at what you actually need to do for your additional now then, they look a lot more complicated, but there's just some basic rules to follow. Okay. Now, what I would say is, as a general rule here, if your numerator's got separate terms being added together, it's quite difficult, and you can easily make mistakes if you try and sort of cancel in things out. Okay? So my advice should be, whenever you've got addition signs or subtraction signs, your best bet is to just separate that out into three different fractions, all with the same denominator. It's kind of the opposite of adding, isn't it? adding fractions where you get the same denominator and then you combine them. Well, I'm going to split it up. So I'll have 6x to the power of 2 sevenths over 6x to the power of 1 seventh plus 3x to the power of 4 sevenths over 6x to the power of 1 seventh and the last term 6x to the power of 1 seventh over 6x to the power of 1 seventh and then you can treat them all separately, okay? Using the same division rule as we've just seen. So six divided by six, that just comes out as one. You don't even need to write it down, but I'll put it in there. And then we've got two sevenths, take away one seventh, which is one seventh, okay? So we've got x to the power of a seventh. Plus three divided by six is a half. So you could write it as a half, or you could write 0 0.5, or you could write your answer over 2. I'm just going to leave it as a half. And again, take away your powers. 4 sevenths take away 1 seventh is 3 sevenths. And my last term, if you notice, I've got exactly the same on the top and the bottom. So 6 divided by 6, that's just going to be 1. 1 seventh take away 1 seventh. You can either say that it's x to the power of 0, and then use your rules that says x to the power of 0 is 1, so I don't need it. Or you might just prefer to think of it as they just perfectly cancel out. Okay, But you just get left with 1 from 6 divided by 6. All right. So that's when you're adding. And it's because you're not allowed to sort of add different powers together. So you can't tidy up that top. So rather than attempting to tidy it up, just split it all up into separate little questions. The next one here is a times in. And I can times together when I've got different powers. Okay, So I don't need to split this one up like I did with the add-in. I can actually um, simplify the top using the multiplication rules and then divide by the bottom afterwards. So we've got on the top, 6 times 10 is 60. X. Now I've got 13 eighths add 3 eighths, which is 16 eighths. Now the key to this is realising that 16 eighths is just two. So 60x squared, okay, all divided by x to the power of a fifth. Now the 60 hasn't got anything that it can be divided by. There is, well, there's a one on the bottom, I suppose, but 60 divided by one isn't going to do anything anyway, so we've got 60. And then sorting our powers out, so I've got two on the top, take away a fifth on the bottom. So 2 take away a fifth, well 2, if you're working in fifths, is 10 fifths. 10 fifths take away 1 fifth is uh, 9 fifths. Okay. 
So 60x the power of minus bits. Moving down then, there's two more, so I have some space to work. So the first one there is an add-in. And so my advice would be to separate them out into two separate fractions. So we've got 18x to the power of 2 fifths over 9x to the power of 1 fifth plus 9x to the power of 4 fifths over 9x to the power of 1 fifth. And then work them out separately. So we've got 18 divided by 9, which is 2. We've got 2 fifths take away 1 fifth, which leaves us with 1 fifth. 9 divided by 9 is just 1, you can even leave it out. 4 fifths take away 1 fifth is 3 fifths. Final answer, you can't do anything with that, that's just how it is. Okay, that is a fifth on the bottom there for you. The next one's a times in, so you can actually simplify the top and then deal with the bottom separately. So if we simplify the top, we've got 6 times 5, which is 30. Now then we've got 3 halves plus a quarter. Now they've got different denominators, so if I rewrite that as six quarters, six quarters add one quarter gives me seven quarters. So that's my top simplified. On the bottom, I've got a power being raised to a power, so I need to times them together, and five times one quarter is five quarters. And now I just use my division rule. So if I put it in here then, so I've got a 30 because it's been divided by 1, so it's just staying as 30. 7 quarters take away 5 quarters is 2 quarters. And you could even tidy that up to be a half. So 30x to the power of a half. Okay. All it is in this topic is breaking each question down into lots of little mini questions and mini steps. That's all it is. A um, couple more. Again, if you want to pause the video and try these on your own first and then just play me and see if we get the say, same answer. So split this one up because it's an add-in. So 3y to the power of a fifth over 5y to the power of a fifth. Those one-fifths are going to cancel out in a minute. And then we've got 2y to the power of 6 fifths over 5y to the power of 1 fifth. Okay, well, 3 divided by 5, I can't do a lot with that. I mean, it's 0 0.6, but actually, I think I'd prefer just to leave it as 3 fifths. We generally do once you get past GCSE. Prefer to leave things as fractions. And then 1 fifth, take away 1 fifth is 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So you can just say that these have just cancelled each other out and you're just left with three-fifths on its own. And then on to our second fraction, then I've got two-fifths, and I can't do anything with it apart from just leave it as two-fifths. Now this time they don't cancel out, so I've got six-fifths, take away one-fifth, which is five-fifths, okay? And y to the power of 5 fifths, well, you'd be better off just writing it as y to the power of 1. So that actually is just y. Okay. For multiplication, so for multiplication, tidy up your top using your multiplication rules. So that's going to be 20x minus 5 quarters, add 13 quarters is 8 quarters. So x to the 8 quarters, 8 quarters though is 2. All right like we had earlier on um, with our fifths, was it? What did we do up here? We had something where we cancelled out earlier on, didn't we? Uh, and we're dividing that by x to the power 3 over 2. So that's going to give me a 20. And then all I've got to worry about is 2 minus 3 over 2. Well, 2 is 4 halves. And 4 halves take away 3 halves leaves me with 1 half. So 20x to the power of a half. And then the last one, because they're pretty much just repetition of the same thing. This is an add-in one again. So split your fractions. I'll work over here. So we've got 18 to the power of 1 fifth over 6x to the power of 1 fifth. Always nice when you've got matching powers because they'll cancel out plus 6x to the 2 fifths over 6x to the power of 1 fifth. 
So then we've got 18 divided by 6, which is 3. These cancel out, so it's just 3. We've got 6 divided by 6, which is 1. 2 fifths take away 1 fifth, leaves me with 1 fifth, and that's the best you can do with that. And that covers just about all of the different types of questions involving fractional powers. Okay. Um, if it's one big fraction, if there's an add-in or taking away on the top, split it up into separate fractions, deal with each one one at a time. If it's a times in one, then just simplify your top and then do your division step at the end.